A lot of YouTubers right now are talking about the Galaxy S10, and I've talked about it briefly and about how I'm fairly intrigued by it. It seems like a very decent phone, but while a lot of YouTubers have their S10 right now, mine is currently on the way. Not that kind of big YouTuber yet where I can get stuff sent to me early, but on top of that, I'm okay with it because I have some thoughts on the S10, and I realize now, post-launch, I really haven't made a dedicated video just about that. So today, I thought I could give you what I'm really thinking when I'm watching all these YouTubers talk about the S10, watching the countless number of people say they're switching to the S10, covering their faces as they do it, and what I think Samsung needs to take away from the way the market's going to respond to this phone. Let's begin. <laughs> So what I notice primarily about all of these smartphone reviews and about all these comparisons is, for the most part, everyone is comparing, even Samsung at their own event, the three new Galaxy S10 phones to the last three iPhones that were released at the end of last year. Probably because they're at the same price point and Samsung heavily references Apple. The Verge even called it the anti-iPhone in their review of the Galaxy S10. And as mentioned, I don't think this is a bad phone. I don't want that to be my message that you guys take away from today's video. But what I think most of the YouTube community and what Samsung primarily is forgetting when they release these Android phones is that there are a ton of iOS users out there and Apple sheep like me that look at the S10 features. They look at that reverse wireless charging, the camera holes, the extra nits on that display, the fingerprint reader and how it works so fast when you unlock it and those triple cameras on the back. We look at all these cool features and say, wow, that's really neat. I can't wait for my next iPhone to have something like that. I notice that becomes very common. A lot of YouTubers saying, this is what I want the next iPhone to be or Apple needs to catch up. Apple needs to be here. And I think there's a reason a lot of us have that mindset. And it basically comes down to we respect the hardware. We respect the innovation that goes into those new Galaxy phones. We like all the features that are advertised with them. But as cool as those features and design changes may be, we're nowhere near ready to ditch our accessories, our Apple Watches, our AirPods, our ecosystem, or ditch that iOS app store for the Play Store. Because as cool as all that is, it still is an Android phone, which means switching ecosystems, switching a ton of our services that we're already embedded into, iMessage, Apple Music, and switching to the Android version of Apple Music, which is just not really the same thing. Having to kind of tether your AirPods or having to ditch your Apple Watch and go with the Galaxy Watch instead, that's a way bigger commitment and a lot of people are likely not willing to make that change, even if the Galaxy S10 has all these amazing features and they are really admirable and cool to see from afar. Ultimately, with their prices as well, they model the iPhone pricing very similarly, with the 10R and S10e both costing $750, the 10s going at $1,000, the S10 being at $900, but the S10 Plus is $1,000, not to mention extra with all those storage options. And when you compare them neck to neck with specifications and features, yeah, the Samsung phone definitely packs the most, which I would hope so. It basically came out halfway through the iPhone release cycle. But ultimately, once you get past all these kind of unique and new features, not that many YouTubers are comparing the Samsung phones to other Android phones that are already out. As Samsung likes to fight and fight with their marketing and their mockery of Apple, I think a lot of the time they're forgetting they have a bigger enemy than that. You can keep trying to rob the Apple sheep herd as much as you want, but ultimately the most amount of people that are looking to buy your phone are people that are already on the Android side and have thousands of phones to choose from, and right now the one who's really killing it is OnePlus. Once you start comparing some of the features the OnePlus 6T has compared to the S10 lineup, you start to realize how much extra you're really paying for with those S10 phones. With the OnePlus 6T, I get that it's not packing everything those phones have, but you have a minimal notch, you have a fingerprint reader built into the display, you may not have as many cameras, but you still do have fast charging, no wireless charging, which is probably the biggest deal breaker for me, but still, you're getting a really decent phone, and look at the price differences there, $550 compared to what most YouTubers are talking about, the S10, which starts at $900 and $1,000 for the Plus model, and you start to ask yourself, are these extra features really worth twice the phone? The what? The wireless bilateral charging, the camera hole being asymmetrical, keeping that headphone jack on there as well, the slightly faster fingerprint reader, I get it, it's faster on the S10, but is it $500 faster? There's no easy answer. For certain people, it definitely would be. As I always say, worth is subjective. And I'm sure the S10 is gonna be a good phone for a lot of people out there, but ultimately, I think the main reason a lot of people aren't gonna switch to it is because it has far more competition it's competing with than just the latest iPhones. It has a vast array of Android phones 
smartphones that are decent and fairly affordable. And when you compare things like the Galaxy S10e, which does not have the fingerprint reader built into the display, it has it built into the power button, whereas you could spend legit $200 less and get the fingerprint reader into the display like you do on the OnePlus 6T. And Samsung has One UI and OnePlus has their Oxygen OS skin. Ultimately though, you're gonna be using the same versions of apps on these two phones. A lot of Android customers out there may see the Samsung as more pricey and asking for a lot more when they can get a lot of those same apps, stay within their Google ecosystem, stay within their Android product line and get a ton of those features with the OnePlus model. It's not exactly the same comparison with the iPhones. See, the iPhone XS Max is a fairly expensive phone compared to the rest of the market. $1,100 for Face ID, that's 6.5 inch OLED display for the dual camera. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but there isn't some $500 phone out there that can give you Face ID, those same dual cameras, that 6.5 inch OLED display for $600 out there. But with the release of the Galaxy S10, you kind of do have that competition with OnePlus outselling Samsung in markets like India, which is very important. And even with Samsung's cheaper model, the S10e, I think the OnePlus still outperforms that in many ways for a much cheaper price point. And, and to adjust that elephant in the room, the OnePlus 7 is coming out just around the corner. And I imagine even if OnePlus decides to raise the price a little bit with their phone, which they may not, perhaps they'll stick it with $550. But if they do even raise the price a little bit, they would still be cheaper than Samsung's cheapest version of the S10e because they could price the OnePlus 7 at $650 and it'd still be a hundred bucks less and it'd probably have a lot more upgrades and a lot more advancements than what you could be used to on those cheaper end Samsung phones. So all I'm trying to say is if you're trying to make an Android phone and you want to convince Apple users to stop buying new iPhones and convert over to Android, price is probably one of the best counter arguments to do that. I don't think that the camera hole in the corner the bilateral wireless charging, the fingerprint reader under the display, those can help and those can be some fancy features, but ultimately if people see that they can get a beautiful phone like a OnePlus 6T and they can get it for $550 and they don't have to spend a grand on a new smartphone upgrade, that is probably gonna be a way bigger selling point than all of those extra features Samsung is packing with their phones, which are cool. And don't get me wrong, I'm excited to try them. My S10 Plus and the Galaxy Buds are on the way and I'll be unboxing them and reviewing them in a couple weeks. But regardless, I still think Samsung needs to look around themselves and realize they have a bigger enemy to worry about than Apple and iPhone users. They need to focus more on the fact that there is a ton of Android phones that are really, really good deals and have a ton of very flagship-like features. That's what you need to worry about, Samsung. Not necessarily having enough cool features packed into the phone so that someone decides, okay, ready to ditch the App Store, ready to ditch iMessage, ready to ditch AirPods, Apple Watch. That's really hard to convince people to switch away from. So the better move is probably to start working towards what these budget phones are becoming capable of. You're still running Android on that $1,000 S10 Plus, and you're still running Android on that OnePlus 6T, but they have drastically different price differences. And feature-wise, it's just a couple things different. And OnePlus's big competitor, the OnePlus 7, that's coming out right around the corner. And I bet you once that comes out, I'm gonna see a ton more YouTubers saying, I'm switching to the OnePlus 7 and price will be brought up a lot, probably in direct comparison to the iPhone. And similar to what we saw last year, the Samsung phone gets a lot of shine for a couple weeks. Everyone loves it. And then after a couple months, everyone stops using it and the Galaxy S10 goes bye-bye. Let me know what you're thinking about the S10 and how it compares to other phones available in the Android market right now. And let me know if you think that packing more of these types of features into the phone is gonna make enough people switch away from iOS. Cause personally, I think a lot of us are way too embedded as it is. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you